Wag yung kayong magkadisgrasyahan tayo niya. Sinasabi ko yung madidisgrasya kayo. At madidisgrasya kayo. Hindi ako urong dito. And I said, I would stake my honor, my life, and even the presidency. Good morning, Malacanang Press Corps. Let's now have presidential spokesperson, Harry Roque. Maganda umaga po, Pilipinas, at maganda umaga po sa mga taga Malacanang Press Corps. Unang-una po, alinsunod sa pangako nating presidente na hindi siya matutulog sa pansitan, sa kabila ng pagtaas ng mga presyo ng bilihin, lalo doon na ng mga pagkain. Nag-issue na po at epektibo na po ang isang uh, administrative order number 13 na ang uh, ninanais po ay padiliin po yung proseso ng pag-angkat ng kinakailangan nating mga pagkain ng maibaba ang presyo ng mga bilihin. Sangayon po sa AO number 13 na pinablish na po ngayon, at ito'y epektibo na. No? Um, kinakailangan po padaliin ang proseso ng pag-accredit uh, ng mga nag-aangkat ng mga pagkain ito. Uh, I-exempt na po natin yung mga nag-aangkat na uh, accredited na from further registration. Ipafacilitate po natin ang pag-aangkat ng mga pagkain beyond yung tinatawag nilang authorized na minimum access volume. Ibig sabihin, dahil minimum siya, po pwede pa tayo mag-aangkat ng mas marami. At... Um, kung kinakailangan, um, tanggalin po lahat ng mga fees na binabayaran no, para pag-angkat ng mga uh, pagkain. Kinakailangan po i-liberalize pa yung pag-i-issue ng permit at saka yung accreditation ng mga mga ngalakal na gusto pang uh, mag-angkat ng bigas para po mabuwag yung monopolya ng mga rice um, hoarders. At to temporarily allow po yung direct importation ng mga gumagamit ng asukal no, um, para sila na po ang mag uh, angkat ng asukal na kanilang uh, kinakailangan. Bukod pa po rito, may tatlong memorandum order na na-issue po ang palasyo. Memorandum order number 26 na inaatasan po ang Department of Agriculture at saka ang Department of Trade and Industry na uh, mag-adapt ng mga pamamaraan para po mapababa yung diprensya ng presyo ng uh, uh, produktong agrikultural pagbili doon sa uh, bukid at yung presyo nila pag binibenta na po sa taong bayan. Kasama po rito yung uh, pagkakaroon ng sariling mga merkado ng gobyerno para mawala na po ng papel yung ating mga traders na tinatawag. Memorandum Order Number 27 na naguuto sa Department of Agriculture, Department of Interior and Local Government, Philippine National Police, and Metro, Metro Manila Authority na gumawa ng mga hakbang para po uh, masigurado yung mabilis at efficient na pag-deliver ng mga imported agricultural and fishery products from the port market, from the ports to our markets. At memorandum number 28, directing the National Food Authority to immediately release all existing rice stocks in its warehouses. Bukod pa po ito doon sa desisyon na inadapt ng uh, um, NFA Council na mag-angkat ng karagdagang 500,000 um, metric tons. At bukod pa po ito doon sa inangkat na bigas na 25% broken ng PITC, no, ng DTI, na um, darating po sa susunod na dalawang linggo. Now, bukod po rito, nag-certify po ng urgent ang ating presidente para maisabatas ng Senado itong batas laban sa ENDO. Now, itong uh, version po ng Senado ay nagbabawal sa lahat ng labor-only contracting at hindi po ini-exempt na itong mga kontraktor ay uh, malaking kapital o maraming investments. Ang sabi po dito, um, uh, labor-only contracting is prohibited. There is labor-only contracting where the job contractor, whether licensed or not, merely recruits and supplies or places workers to a contractee regardless of whether or not he or she has substantial capital or investment in the form of tools, equipment, machinery, work premises, among others. So ito po ay effectively it repeals yung provision ng labor contractor na labor code na po pwede ang labor only contracting basta merong sapat na kapital at assets yung kumpanya. So ngayon po kinakailangan magtrabaho ka na doon sa pinagseserbisyo pinagseserbisyohan mo o yung pinapasukan mo at hindi na po, po pwedeng magkaroon ng mga labor mga labor recruitment entities. Now, um, in fairness, isa po tayo sa nagsulong sa, sa kongreso nitong anti-endo law. Ang ating bill po ay July pa of 2016 na, ipa, na, na i-filed, July 4. Um, Na-approvan po yung ating version ng Kamara January 
at nakabinbin pa nga po ito sa Senado hanggang ngayon. And finally, uh, mabuting balita po, ang uh, Department of Budget and Management ay nag-release po ng 662.5 million para po dagdagan yung Quick Response Fund ng Department of Social Welfare and Development. Ito po ay gagamitin para sa pambili ng mga food packs na binibigay doon sa mga biktima ng kalamidad at iba pang mga abiria. Sangayon po sa DBM, ang QRF ay kasama po sa budget ng ilang mga ahensya para po sa quick response. No? Itong quick response fund po ay uh, babalik po sa um, dating halaga kapag uh, bumalik na po sa normal yung buhay ng mga taumbayan na apektado ng mga kalamidad. So questions um, from the Malacanang Press Corps? MPC questions, Joseph Morong. Sir, yung munang ano, sa uh, Endo, Senate Bill ba yung binasa mo, sir, or memo? Which one? Yung sa Endo po, sir. Ang binasa ko po is the bill itself which the President ah, certified as urgent. Okay. And I refer to um, Committee Report 392, which is now Senate Bill... Ano ba yung uh, Senate Bill na yun? If I'm not mistaken, this is Senator Joel so, Villanueva, uh, Joel, no, yes. if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so sir, clarification. Right now, ang existing status ko natin is that there are small companies, they call it agencies, and they supply it to bigger companies, no? Yun yung mga uh, contractuals. Apo. Uh, that was the dilemma before, right? Nang Actually, hindi lang po small yung mga companies na yan. Mal Kasi uh, ang pinagbabawal po, labor-only contracting, pero may exemption po sa labor code. Correct. Na kapag maraming, kapag malaking kapital at maraming investments, hindi siya kabo kasi kabo yung pinagbabawal. Mm -hmm. So, kung ikaw ay talagang lihiti mong kumpanya na ikaw ay nagre-recruit lamang at nagbibigay ng trabaho ng uh, manggagawa sa mga kumpanya, hindi po yung pinagbabawal ng labor code. Before. So, ngayon po, ang provision, <laughs> bawal na po talaga ang labor-only contracting. At ito po, babasahin ko na ha. It is still illegal, uh, it is still um, labor-only contracting regardless of whether or not he or she has substantial capital or investment in the form of tools, equipment, machinery, work premises, among others. So that's a whole industry, no? Na mawawala. Yes, kinakailangan po ngayon ay uh, direct na silang i-employo ng mga kumpanya. Hindi na po dadaan sa mga employment agencies, even if they have substantial capital. Okay, so that's assuming it will pass... Uh Congress, but it is a priority measure of the president. It is now yes. certified urgent by the president. Alin sunod po niya sa pangako niya sa kampanya na tatapusin na talaga yung endo. Ang position po ng presidente, sa loob ng existing labor code, tinapos na po niya yung endo dahil um, um, pinaparegularize na po yung mga empleyado na hindi regular sa mga kumpanyang pinagtatrabahuan nila pero may depensa po talaga yung mga contractors Correct. at saka yung mga employers <clears throat> dahil exemption sa existing law na yung mga kumpanya, yung mga recruiting companies na malaki ang kapital. Okay, so just one last point. Talk to those na, kon, na sakop ng mga agencies. So, ang possibility is that they will be absorbed by the company. Yes, that's the good side of it. But the bad side is, pa paano kung hindi sila i-absorb ng uh, parent company? Well, yan po talaga ang uh, dilema, no? pero dahil nagkaroon po ng clamor, uh, presidente naman inangako, ito po ang deliver niya. Siguro naman po, dahil itong mga ito ay nagtatrabaho pa rin sa mga kumpanyang ito, maa-absorb po sila. Kasi ngayon, kung ito ay maisa sa batas, eh sinong gagawa nung ginagawa ng mga um, contractual employees? No? Ang mangyayari dapat dyan, yung mga contractual, gawing regular employees. Okay, so wala naman sa under the proposal to compel those uh, companies to absorb this service, the, the contractuals, wala naman. Hindi ko po nabasa in its entirety okay. the, uh, the version of the Senate. Kasi medyo iba yung version na hinain ko sa Kongreso. No? But my version in the House would recognize those working beyond six months as regular employees. No? Pero hindi ko po alam kung ano itong uh, provision dito sa um, Senate version na sinertify as urgent. Sir, humayin ko lang alit. So under the Labor Code, if you've been working for the company for six months, Dapat ba may law sa labor ko dapat i-absorb sila? Presumed Baka na. Presumed ka na you're okay. a regular employee. So, pwedeng yun yung route? Yes. Okay. yes. That was what I had in my version. Salam, sir. Ina Andolong? Sir, just a clarification again regarding that. What happens doon sa um, exemption sometimes, you know, companies are allowed to hire on a per-project basis? 
Well, separate naman po yan kasi per piece po ang tawag dyan eh. O kaya naman kaya for limited period of time. No? So dapat po may exemption din yan. No? Uh, pero ang importante po talaga, ito yung pinoprotesta ng mga manggagawa ng May 1 na hanggang hindi na pagbabawalan yung uh, pagkakaroon ng uh, contractual uh, or contractual employees, mas kina na malaki yung kumpanya na nangungontrata at binibigay ang uh, minimum labor um, conditions, no? eh, meron pa rin endo. So again, sir, um, even if direct na yung hiring doon sa kumpanya, if the company says that we only need you for a certain project, Seasonal. maybe for six months, oh, that's or fine. Or project-based. Oh, pwede, pwede pa rin yan. Oh, oh. Kasi for instance, yung mga um, contemporary project naman, no? may, may pagpagawa ka, no? itapos na yung bahay, alam naman maging regular employee ka. No? Mm -hmm. So po, pwede po yun for fixed serv uh, contracts, for fixed uh, services na gagawin po. Okay. Sir, what um, industries uh, does the palace see this um, affecting the most? Mostly retail. Retail. Mostly retail and services. No? Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. May follow up? O sige, Joseph. So, sir, ang binabanya yung subcontracting, di ba? Paano ba ikaw contracting malaki? Contracting altogether. Hindi, Wala I mean lang subcontracting na tinatawag dyan. So ngayon, bawal na ang contracting. So ikaw magpapatrabaho at ito ay, uh, it will satisfy yung tinatawag ng control test dahil kinakailangan kang manatili sa iyong uh, posisyon at wala kang discretion kung anong gagawin mo for a given 8-hour period, hmm. you should be considered as a regular employee. So wala na pong contracting. So it has to be employer-employee relationship uh, between the worker and yung lugar na pinagtatrabahuhan. Kasi sir, halimbawa sa mga services, no, yung mga house cleaning for example, yung mga hotels would have, halimbawa, uh, another company to handle those people and they are probably not regular of that second company. Wala na yun. Let's just say that will be the subject of judicial interpretation. Uh -huh. Kasi marami magsasabi ho na ang aking main liability is ganito, yung mga janitors, no, hindi naman kinakailangan. Let's see how the courts will interpret that. Okay, okay follow up. Uh, Henry Uri. Uh, Secretary, pa paano yung mga matagal ng uh, hindi na re regular tapos biglang lumabas itong batas na ito? Gaya ng sinabi ko, may provision naman po ang labor code. Six months, you're deemed to be a regular employee. So retroactively, magiging regular na sila? Hindi and naman po. salaries and benefits will yun also... Yan talaga yung provision ng batas talaga, six months. Wala pong retroactive application yan. Yung six months rule has always been in the law. So kahit ikaw eh, nagtatrabaho na ng three years, hindi ka nare-regular, kung may batas na ito, wala na yon. Well, ibig sabihin po, dapat ka maging regular. So magiging regular ka? Yes. From the day na kailangan mong ma-regular? Well, from the law, when, when the law becomes effective. Okay. Mm. So, so pati salaries and uh, benefits mo? Yes, of course. So. Oh. Thank you. May follow up pa rin? Joseph? Wala akong back wages naman yan. It's prospective nga eh. Mm. Sige. Sir, so ibig sabihin, assuming no, that the law become, that, that the law is passed, no? So, today, for example, mm. all those who are working as contractuals will either be absorbed by the main company, tama, and henceforth enjoy uh, compensation as a regular employee from today uh, onwards, correct? Yes. Um, well, nakasulat po dito sa panukalang batas na ito, no, may kerong po siyang amendment dun sa probationary employment, and I will quote, no, probationary employment shall not exceed six months from um, six months from the first day of service, regardless of the nature of work to be performed. A job description and qualification standards to qualify for the regular employment shall be made by the employer to the employee. So, yan po ang sinasabi. Ibig sabihin talaga, um, kinakailangan bago mag six months, kung talagang hindi katanggap-tanggap yung servisyo ng tao, dapat hindi na siya magpatuloy magtrabaho. That's going to be the policy from today, the law is passed, kanyari, and then onwards. Yes, but as ang, it should be. Yun pong mga back wages, wala man tayong pinag-uusapan na ganun. Wala man tayong back wages. Kumbaga, mababago lang yung status mo. Correct. But wala ka namang i-claim na I've been working for maybe two years sa, sa, as a contractor. Tama po yan. Clarification lang sa soundbite, please. Mm -hmm. Tama so, po yan. Wala naman pong retroactive application batas. Ang mangyayari lang ay hindi na po sila endo. Sila po ay magiging regular na empleyado, pero magiging regular na empleyado po sila pag naisa batas na ito. Thank you, sir. Okay. May follow-up ba? Other issue na? Other issue, Rose Novenario. Good morning, sir. 
Sir, Nine sa po. National Executive Council meeting ngayon ng Liberal Party, uh, binatikos ni dating presidente, binigno Aquino III, si pres yung administrasyong Duterte, ginamit niya pa po yung Philippine flag, na nagsisimbolo raw po, binaligtad niya, yun daw po yung kalagayan ng bansa ngayon pag binaligtad daw po yung bandila. Taliwas daw po nung panahon niya na diretso yung Philippine flag. Ibig sabihin, diretso yung takbo ng politika, ekonomiya. Yan, pabayaan na po natin na si Presidente Noy Noy Aquino. No? Yan po ay paninindigan niya, pero marami pong uh, naniniwala na maraming pagkukulang. No? Maraming hindi nagawa ang gobyerno at nagkaroon nga po ng bagong uh, salita ng mga panahon na yon, yung salitang Noy Noy ng definition, walang ginagawa, nakatanga at uh, naglalaro ng video games. Thank you. Christine? A microphone, Joseph. May follow-up ba about ano, Liberal Party? No? Chris, uh, Maricel Halili. Sir, just one quick reaction lang po dun sa sinabi ni VP Lenny Robredo denying their involvement doon sa sinasabing uh, move to oust the President. Sabi niya, it's a dangerous accusation. Well, siguro po as far as VP Lenny is concerned, that's a, um, that's a fair um, statement because as far as I know, she was not amongst those specifically named to be part of the conspiracy. Um, she is, after all, the second highest elected official. She took an oath to support the Constitution, and she should not, and is expected not to support any unconstitutional means to remove the president. No? So, pero ang uh, ating AFP naman po, hindi ko po sila narinig na pinangalanan si VP Lenny. So, there is nothing unfair as far as um, VP Lenny is concerned because she was not specifically named. Pero hindi nyo naman po matatanggal na yung uh, intelligence funds na ginagamit natin nga para sa ganitong paraan ay nagsasabi na meron talagang ilan sa mga Liberal Party na nagpaplano na makipagsabuatan para mapatalsik si Presidente Duterte. Now, ang isyu ko nga po kahapon is gawin na nilang lahat hindi sila magiging tagumpay dahil suportado ng taong bayan si President Duterte. Sir, may we know kung sino-sino yung sinasabi po ninyong members ng LP na gustong makiisa dun sa pagpapatal si kay Presidente? Bahala na po ang AFP because they have the intel. I don't. Sa, sa totoo ho, even if I have access, nakakapagod basahin yung mga intel reports nila. No? So, hindi ko na po binabasa ang intel reports nila. No? But I will, I will find out kung meron pong uh, specifically named dun sa intel report ng uh, AFP. But I think uh, we stand by the intelligence information as gathered by um, the um, Armed Forces of the Philippines. These are documents seized from um, members of the CPP NPA. It clearly provides for creating a broad um, coalition with um, Liberal Party members and um, the Magdalo. But again, I stress, gawin nyo lang lahat, walang mangyayari dyan. Napakalakas po ng suporta ng taong bayang kay Presidente. But at least, sir, do we have an information of these, if these are incumbent officials? Wala po, dahil uh, as I said, it's, it's an intelligence information and what was made uh, um, public by, if I'm not mistaken, General, um, was it Parl... 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 Parlade, no? Did not specify names. Sir, last na lang, may we have your reaction dun po sa tatlong senatorial pets na pinangalanan ng LP? Well, good luck to all of them po. Thank you, sir. Uh, follow up. Uh, other issue, Christine? Sir, yung AO on the, the ease on importing yung mga specific na food, it did not state kung hanggang kailan yung importation. So what was the, in, ano ba yung intention of the economic pain? Yung how long will we import this? Uh, we will determine po when this will end. For now, wala pong bidigyan na timeline. However, the agencies involved are given the obligation to report within one month what steps they have taken to implement. So monthly po, it's a check ng uh, executive secretary natin kung tumutupad yung mga ahensya na um, pinagbigyan ng ganitong kautusan. So parang it's just indefinite for now. Indefinite for now dahil importante po talagang labanan itong inflation. Pureba po na itong pagkakaiba ng administrasyon ni Presidente Duterte, hindi po tayo natutulog sa pansitan. Okay. So yung last na lang, yung two memo orders, 
yung uh, 17 and I didn't get the the last memo. Okay. Um, I have the text here. I will ask uh, Director Ting to post the text of these four issuances. Memorandum order number 28 directing the National Food Authority to immediately release existing rice stocks in its warehouses. Memorandum, memorandum order number 27 directing the DA DILG, PNP, and MMDA to adopt measures to ensure the efficient and seamless delivery of imported agriculture and fishery products from ports to markets, and directing the Department of Agriculture and Department of Trade and Industry to adopt measures to reduce the gap between farm gate prices and retail prices of agricultural products. Dito po sa 27, yung to ensure the efficient and seamless delivery of imported agricultural and fishery products, kasama na po dito at sinabi rito yung pag-issue ng food passes para hindi na po siya haharangin no, ng kahit sino. So pag meron kang food pass, talagang kahit sino dyan, MMDA, hindi ka pwedeng harangin, hindi ka pwedeng uh, pigilan, kinakailangan, ma-deliver ka agad yung uh, daladalang uh, pagkain sa merkado. Okay, alam. So last na lang. So yung dalawang memo will uh, parang address yung how to make it easy then to yes, distribute yes. and deliver the... Uh -oh. Ito na po yung katuparan doon sa sinabi ng economic team na they will issue um, EOs para mapabilis yung uh, pagpasok ng mga inaangkat na pagkain at para masigurado yung mas maagang delivery ng mga inaangkat na pagkain sa merkado. Problema po kasi minsan nandyan na, hindi naman ma-release dahil sa red tape. So ngayon po, wala na po yung red tape na yan. Pagdating, dapat baba deliver sa merkado ng ma bumaba ang presyo ng mga bilihin. Okay, uh, Bernadette? Sir, yung sa PITC importation po, sir, kasi sabi po ni Secretary Pinyol po, wala daw pong in-approve yung NFAC po kahapon regarding PITC importation po. So, Tama po yun. Hindi po kailangan approved, approvan uh, ng uh, um, council yan. Itong importation pong ito ay sinabi ni Yusek Ruth sa harap po ni Presidente sa Benguet nung kami bumisita sa Benguet. At sinabi nga po ni Yusek Ruth na ang inangkat nilang bigas ay 25% broken dahil ito yung 27 pesos a kilo. So, iba pa po ito sa mga importation ng National Food Administration. So, sir, ano po yung mode of importation po ng PITC po? Um, I, I understand they also had a tender. Open tender, so, sir? Oh, oh, I also had the, they also had a tender dahil sanay naman ang PITC na mag-angkat. Sir, yung volume po, alam niyo po ba, sir? Alam mo, binanggit yan ni, ano, eh, ni, ni Yusek uh, Ruth sa Benguet. Mm -mm. Hindi ko lang maalala. Okay. Pero um, we are contacting Yusek Ruth now. But this was mentioned in the presence of the President by Yusek Ruth. So, sir, two week, in two weeks po expected darating oh, yung PITC? in two PITC. weeks na po darating yung importation ng PITC. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Rose? <laughs> sir, uh, sa interview sa inyo, sinabi niyo willing kayo mag-file ng technical mal malversation case laban kay NFA Administrator Jason Aquino. Hindi ko po sinabi yan. Ay, nasa ano? Ang sinabi ko, kung walang magpa-file, ako mismo magpa-file at hindi lang for technical mal malversation. Pa-file lang ko rin siya ng graph because causing injury to the public and to the government is also a graph. At dahil hindi nga niya ginast ginastos yung pera para bumili, na galing sa mga lokal na mga magsasaka para may buffer stock tayo, nag-aangkat tayo ngayon at nagbibigay ng pera sa mga dayuhang mga um, um, uh, magsasaka. So, hindi lang mo technical malversation isasampa ko sa kanya kung walang ibang magsampa. Graph and corruption din po to set the record straight. Mas marami pa po akong isasampa. At saka, maliit lang pong parusa sa technical malversation. Gusto ko yung matagal ang kulong. Sir, sir, tingin nyo ano yung motibo ni Jason Aquino? Bakit niya ginawa ito? Natural. Kapag hindi ka bumili ng lokal na bigas, mag-aangkat ka. At sinabi ko na kanina, yung ating, yung ating proseso ngayon na may monopolia, growth, prone po talaga yan to graft and corruption. Miski sabihin mo na na may mga accredited importers, syempre may favoritism pa rin dyan. At yung G2G, that's the worst. Kasi walang may alam kung anong proseso nangyayari sa G2G importation. Sila-sila lang. Thank you. I have not accused him of actual um, financial graft because I do not know. However, I promise to look into it soon. And not only that, I also know that some importers are already preparing to sue him. Why? 
meron na nga authority na binigay ang council na mag-angkat. Dinelay-delay pa niya kasi gusto niya talaga parang he has a preference for G2G. So marami pong magdidemanda ngayon laban sa kanya for yung mga losses sa uh, sustained by them no as a result of uh, orchestrations para hindi makapag-import pursuant to the open tender system. Sir, does the president share this um, position that uh, technical malversation or perhaps draft charges should be filed against Probably not, but this has been confirmed by the Commission on Audit. And um, as I said, I only speak for the president. I'm not obliged to speak for Jason Aquino. And I speak in this manner because the president is still tasked with implementation of laws. Sir, doon po sa AO, uh, may specific provisions pertaining to the additional importations for rice and fishery products. But just to be clear about it, covered, are these the only agricultural products that will be affected by dito sa removal of non-tariff barriers or all? What Lahat specific? po yan na, na po pwedeng mag-import. Uh, mag no? Ang pwede naman pong importin ngayon ay bigas, manok, okay. baboy, isda, um, yan po. Okay, Rose, Rosalie. Sir, uh, good morning po. Sir, may mga reports po na may mga retailers, grocery, supermarkets na gustong tumulong na magbenta ng murang bigas. Pero ang problema po, pahirapan daw po ang kuha ng permit, iba pa yung pagbabayaran, iba pa yung pagkukuhanan ng stock. So ano po yung, kasama ba dito yun sa memorandum kasama order? Kasama na po yan. I think that can be subsumed by uh, one of the um, issuances uh, recently um, uh, signed by the executive secretary, no? Um, kasama po yan doon sa AO mismo, 13, and kasama po yan. No? Kasi yung AO 13 says na they will uh, streamline, okay, procedures and requirements and uh, with the intention of facilitating the entry of imported uh, goods. So they may already be a violation of AO 13, although in fairness, AO 13 was only published today in the newspaper, so it will only become effective actually 15 days from date of publication in the newspaper. So, pero ngayon pa lang po, eh, pwede na lang po nahin yan. Um, so, nananawagan po ako sa NFA, kung naman po ito kapagsalita ng presidente, nag-issue na po ng AO 13, itigil nyo na po yung kalokohan dyan. Ang gusto po ng palasyo, papasuki ng ilangkat ng bigas, dahil importante po na maibaba ang presyo ng bigas. Alam ko po, maraming na natutukso na habang meron silang discretion dyan, eh, may pagkakataon na magkapera. Tigilan nyo na po yan. Hindi na po kayo po pwede magpasasa dyan. Kung kinakailangan po, eh, talaga iisa-isahin kayo tatanggalin sa pwesto ninyo. Wala pong sinasantong presidente, lalo na po ang pinag-uusapan bigas. Huling babaya, babala na po yan. And I speak with full authority from the president to implement Administrative Order 13. F follow up? Uh, follow up si Deyo muna. Deyo, de Guzman. Morning, uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, follow up daw po kay Jason Aquino. So, sasabihin niyo, pwede, pwede, pwede niyo po bang sabihin na ngayon na nagkamali si Presidente na i-appoint si Jason Aquino as the Hindi ko po alam. Hindi ko po alam kung bakit siya na-appoint and I was not here when he was appointed. All I know is that recently, his, his resignation has been accepted. Thank you, sir. Follow up? Ibang uh, sandali lang. Follow up muna, si Lay. Secretary, good morning. Uh, sa rice importation po, dahil sinasabi babaha ng mga imported rice sa mga susunod na araw, ano po yung assurance ng gobyerno na hindi naman makukumpromiso yung kalagayan ng mga rice farmers na baka yung produkto nila hindi na mabili o kung bilhin man ay sa mababang halaga na? Oh, well, wag po kayo mag-alala kasi dahil sa pagbagyong ompong, Eh, parang ang sinasabi nila, 20 plus billion na po ang naging danyo sa ating uh, agrikultura. Unfortunately, Isabela and Cagayan are recognized rice bowls. So mukha po talagang kinakailangan mag-angkat dahil yung bumper crop that we were expecting may no longer happen dahil nga po sa uh, bagyong obpo. Uh, follow up muna si Joseph. Still on NFA. Sir, yun lang sa, I'll just highlight yung uh, memo number 28. NFA is asked to order to release all its rice stocks. So that's medyo immediate, no? Kung halimbawa in terms of effect. Um, how many 
uh, metric tons are there in the warehouses that should be in the market now para wala tayong nakikita na you know, mahabang pila for the NFA. Nandito po yan sa, sa order na mismo. No? Immediately release approximately 230,000 metric tons of rice currently in stock in its warehouses. The NFA shall likewise immediately release the 100,000 metric tons of rice previously contracted to be delivered before the end of September. So by end of September, we should have 330,000 metric tons of rice in the market. So dapat, sir, to be layman about it, dapat bumabahan na ng NFA rice. Dapat po, at babantayan po natin kapag hindi nakarating sa merkado yan. Eh, but sir, na-stuck in the first place. So yung mga nagbabant nagpaplano po na i-divert na naman ng NFA rice at wag dalhin sa merkado, nako, inatasan na po ang pulis, inatasan na po ang lahat na subaybayan na yung pag-release ng NFA Para alam nyo na po, hindi na po kayo magtatagumpay kung magpaplano pa kayong hindi parating yan sa merkado. Sir, bakit siya na-stuck in the first place? Hindi ko po alam. Mm. Okay. Ano na? Uh, other, uh, NFA, uh, Henry, still on NFA. Last na siya sa NFA. Secretary, uh, pakilinaw lang. Galit ba ang Pangulong Duterte kay Jason Aquino? Hindi ho siguro. Dahil hindi naman siya magdedemanda. Ang sinabi ko, pag walang ibang magdemanda, ako po magdedemanda. Uh, hindi ba mahirap sa poder ninyo na kayo ay isang uh, membro din ng gabinete pagkatapos eh, ang sasampahan ninyo ay appointed ng Pangulo? Hindi po. Siguro po pag nagsampa ako, hindi na ako membro ng gabinete. Hmm. Pag? Pakiulit? Tapos na yun. Next, please. <laughs> other issue? Other issue? Si Joyce muna. Joyce. <laughs> Sir, the approval and trust ratings of President Duterte. Sir, over here. Um, yes. Ayan. The approval and trust rating of President Duterte dropped this September accord according to Pulse Asia survey from 88 noong June to 75 this September. Where do we attribute this? Well, I believe that's still a very good approval rating, no? Um, certainly higher than mine. But anyway, and uh, certainly still the highest of all the officials surveyed by Pulse Asia. So, pinakamataas pa rin ang approval rating ng Presidente. Pero siyempre, alam nyo, ito nga eh. Kaya, why do I say these things about Jason? Kasi parang, yung single issue ng bigas, nakalimutan na ng tao yung mga iba pang achievements sa administrasyon dahil malapit nga ito sa sitmura. So, hindi natin maiiwasan yung pagtaas ng presyo ng krudo, pero itong nangyari sa bigas, dapat na iwasan to. Kung sapat yung ating stock at kung uh, um, na, na, nabigyan natin ng uh, at least man lang yung NFA rice no, na hindi natin nagawa. No? So, isa po yan sa malaking bagay. Kaya ako, personal, galit. Kasi parang nabaliwala lahat ng mga ginagawang mabuti ng presidente pagdating dito sa usaping uh, bigas. Ito po yung nakikita natin problem that caused the dipping of the trust Hindi ko po alam. Kasi hindi ko pa nakikita yung uh, survey. Normally naman sa survey, magsasabi din yung respondents kung bakit. But I've not seen it. But I could imagine that uh, I myself, I think that um, it's not fair for a single agency of government to create this kind of a problem. No? Uh, natabunan tuloy yung mga gains natin during the same period. How do we plan to improve the ratings of the president? Well, ito naman po. Ginagawa natin ang lahat para maayos itong uh, usaping bigas para mapababa ang uh, presyo ng mga bilihin. Inaamin po namin, masakit pong inflation para sa lahat. Pati po para sa presidente na bumibili rin ang kanyang kinakain. No? Dahil hindi naman siya palagi nandito sa Malacanang. No? Libre lang siya dito sa Malacanang. Um, so, ginagawa po natin lahat yan. We're in this together. At makikita naman po natin na magkakaresulta na lahat po na mahakbang na ginawa natin. Mapapababa po natin ang presyo ng bilihin. Hindi po natin mapapababa ang presyo ng... Uh, uh, langis, pero gagawa po tayo ng pamamaraan para maibsan itong mahal na bibihin. Okay, Nestor? Hi, sir. So, is Malacanang concerned with the double-digit drop of the president since this happened after the government uh, announced the 6.4 inflation and the revocation of the presidential amnesty of Senator Altillanes? The president rules because it is his constitutional duty. He doesn't rule for survey results. Maraming beses na po niya sinabi yan. So, uh, we take note of the survey results, but we are not affected by it because ang Presidente naman will do his best to discharge his duties as 
President and Commander in Chief. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, RJ. Except sir, na lang dami ng question yung ngayon, ha? Sir, do we have date? Do we have data, sir, uh, regarding NFA buffer stock as of today? Wala po akong data niyan, but I could give you on Thursday. Okay. Uh, Virgil, magtatanong. Okay. Marisal Halili, last question na tayo. Oh, Joseph. Wow, meron pa. Sir, ibang issue lang. Yung sa criminal liability, um, there's a Senate bill by, I think, Senator Soto, lowering it from 15 to 13. So, in effect, uh, yung mga children who will be 15 and be involved in crimes, they will be charged. Kasi ngayon, di ba hindi? Hindi po ganyan yung version na naman namin nung na approve namin sa bababang kapulungan. I'm sorry, I always have to bring this out. Kasi lahat naman yung mga aking panukalang batas, I acted on it before transferring to Malacanang. No? Yeah. And the version of the House now is... Um, there is still no imprisonment. There will be um, turnover, perhaps, as the worst case scenario to the DSWD. Pero meron ding option na talagang uh, monitor din ng DSWD yung uh, mga magulang, no? bago kunin yung mga anak nila. Pero yung possibility po ng imprisonment, wala po dun sa version na pinasa ng uh, kamera. What age are we talking about? The 15 below? I think um, we... We, I cannot remember now, but I think the compromise was 15, eh, if I'm not mistaken. No? I'll have to review the, the House version. No, but as a matter of principle, sir, do you think that those children who are 15 years old should be uh, criminally held? Or? As a spokesperson of the president, that is the president's position, that, that the uh, Pangilinan law um, contributed to the rights of criminality. And that's why the House bill does provide for measures to be taken against juvenile offenders. They will not get away scot-free. Okay, sir. Thanks. Okay. Last question, na, Christine. So, kanina sa uh, kay Karen Davila, you said you're going to talk to the president about your plans. Karen, sir, will you, when will you talk to the president about it? Busy po siya ngayon. Ang dami niyang diplomatic functions. Kasi Kapag, ba next uh, month magpa-file na ng, that's the... Let's just say within the month, siguro. On what you intend to do. Yes, yes. Okay, no more? Okay, Joyce, pahabol. Sir, um, Colonel Josefa Bergibal issued an, uh, or submitted an affidavit to the Makati Regional Trial Court saying that uh, Senator Antonio Trillanes IV indeed filed an amnesty application and he admitted his guilt. What can you say about this? We'll let the courts decide. Again, I will repeat that the rule of evidence is the best evidence rule. The best evidence that he filed is either the copy of the application in the DND itself or a copy of his received application, both of which cannot be presented in court. But we leave that to the court to appreciate. Okay, no more questions? Okay, thank you, Presidential Spokesperson Harry Roque. Thank you. Maraming thank salamat. See you on Thursday. Thank you, Malac tayo yung sa MGB, thank you, Malacanang Press Corps and back to my studio sa Radio Pilipinas MGB. and Thursday People's Television na. Network. Ask them na to come here. Ask MGB to come here. Huh? For Thursday. Huh? Bye.